I'm here myself. Do my hair for me. Yes, man. Like, I feel real good about this. Right Pay attention because you are now listening to Permission to Speak Freely. 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 <laughs> it's been a minute, man. It's been a minute. Oh, man. What's going on, man? What's the deal? What's going on out there in, in, in your good town, man? You done moved. You done did, you've been doing some big things, yeah, man. Yeah, we, we three hours away now from each other. Um, yeah, man. Nothing much. Just yeah. been getting the house together. Um, boxes on boxes on boxes, putting together furniture, going to the recycling center like at least once a week, twice a week. Drop. I'm I'm really anal, so I don't like any boxes being in the house. So I'll be at the recycling center probably like three times a week, dropping off boxes, yeah. um, cardboard like the cardboard stuff, and then I'll be uh, then I go to the uh, the landfill. <laughs> I'm like the only car at the landfill dropping off uh, trash because I don't want <laughs> the styrofoam, all that stuff. I don't want no trash, so I'm always, you know, yeah. doing something like that. My I, I, my first time is different for me than San Diego. My first time going to the recycling center, it was a, you know, the traffic was stopped. I'm like, what the traffic stop for, man? I need to, I need to move, man. And um, yeah, a couple cars up, it was a cop parked in a van, and he was taking his sweet old time. I guess he was coming to direct traffic because the recycling center is right across the street from uh, elementary school. So he was coming to direct uh. traffic. But it was like a 20 minute wait. I'm like getting out the car. Like, hey, well, you know, what's I'm like, why are these people acting like this normal? You know what I'm saying? I was like three cars away, too. But um, yeah, just that. Uh, a lot of boxes, a lot of um, moving in. Uh, just had family over for the first, you know, weekend of having family over. Uh, the nephews, uh, they had a real good time. We had some fun, man. What about you? Yeah, that was good, man. I seen I seen you out there, man, with the look with the kiddos, man. It's good stuff, man. Yeah, yeah man. I had a I had a pretty good I had a pretty good um time, man. I've been man, I'm I'm telling you, man. I so I'm going to school right now, man. Mm. So don't don't hey, don't even ask me about no books, man. <laughs> you know that's coming. <laughs> I ain't been Man, don't ask me about no books, man. I've been in this masters. I'm doing this the masters, man. These classes, man, and they on a whole nother level, man. Yeah. Like I'm taking this class right now on research methods right now, man. And and man, it's a lot of research, a lot of reading, and and man, it's it's it's, it's hardcore, man. Like these these teachers, some this doctor, man, she ain't playing no games with me, man. I got to really lock in, man. Yeah. <laughs> she ain't messing with me, man. So, but other than that, man. I'm having a pretty good time, man. Freaking going on these ships. We 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 in it now, man. We in it on these ships now, so it ain't no more chill, relax, and all that type of stuff. So, man, uh, That's uh, cool. we we locked in now, man. How how so, does that school stuff, schedule man. work? How does that school schedule work with the work schedule? Um, so I have pretty much when I get when I I get a week of of work, and I have to like. Tuesday at midnight to get it done. Mm -hmm. So you got discussion boards and you got all that stuff that you have to have to do. But you long as you have all your research done, man. I hit that research thing up, man. I hit that topic, man, and and that stuff be saying seven and eight pages, man. I'm like minimum, minimum seven to eight pages, man. Come on, man. What's wrong with these people? <laughs> I need like one page, one page minimum, man. That's what I need. One page, bit of a. And, so, I, and that's the first thing I look for, man. I don't oh, see what it's. I don't see what it's about. I don't see nothing. I, <laughs> what's oh, the minimum man. page? That's all I be looking for, man. Minimum page. So yeah, is, it, man. is it like you, a, is, you only got one turn in day? You know, um, when I went to school and I, I, I be watching my wife's school, she's two. It's like a Thursday turn in day and a Sunday. Thursday would be like for like group discussions, and then Sunday would be like for the big uh, projects. You, that's what the same yeah. thing with you. It, yeah, so today is the, the the discussions, the group discussions, and then Tuesday at midnight is the assignment. Okay. Turn in. Okay. What you in school for? Yeah, man. Uh, project management. So I'm getting a master's in project management. Okay. All right. Hey, um, yeah. I guess we, I guess it's a good time to introduce the podcast for any any new listeners, right? <laughs> it's permission to speak. Yeah, to man. The podcast. Yeah. I'm Damo. And I'm Damon. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's been a while for us, man. Uh, we might be kind of yeah. slow on the draw, but it's been a while. Uh, we we just got yeah, over some man. technical difficulties setting up, but we here. Um, 
And you would think with it being a while, we will be polished, uh, ready to go, a bunch of uh, topics and contents. <laughs> but today we're just going to come and we're going to uh, speak pretty much from the heart, talk about some things that we you know, went through in the time that we haven't been um, here doing a podcast. Uh, life, you know, kind of jumped in a way. But outside yeah, of introducing the pod, you got anything to say, first off, an introduction? Yeah, man. Well, in the introduction, man, I know we're going to talk about it a little later, man, but I really, um, I have had a pretty good 2021, man. I had like got two kids graduate, man, mm. um, this year, man. So, um, one of them graduating like next month, but one, I, uh, my daughter in Arkansas, man, Kimari, big shots out, man. She just graduated, man, from, from high school, man. So it's a big deal, man. We went down there. Me and me and uh, Ella went down there, man. And she did a thing, man. So it's a big deal, man. Congratulations. Got one more. Got one more, man. One Mark, more to graduate. Mark, right? Yeah. Mark finna graduate. Yep. Yeah, man. We got the invite. I appreciate the invite. Uh, that's like the day after I oh, go no back problem. to work. So we won't make it to the graduation party, but I definitely appreciate the invite. Oh, most definitely. Super uh, oh, proud man. of Mark. And I'm happy to have been a part of uh ptsf was like some part of his uh year this year he did something a little piece on us so yeah man, appreciate that, man. yeah for sure man, good luck to him yeah, man. Man. is he still considering navy yeah man so he he um trying to join in february man so he had to wait a little bit but other than that man he's supposed to be joining in february man like freaking ctn man is oh, what he um okay. looking at yeah. so yeah man smart kid man so i'm looking forward to see what he do yeah. What about your daughter? What's her plans? Man, she, 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 she kind of sold on this veterinarian thing, man. So I'm, you know, that's her dream. That's her thing. So I'm gonna see where it go, man. I'm a, I'm a supporter. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a supporter, man. That sounds. I'm a really supporter, good. man. Animal doctor. That sounds really, really. Yeah, good. yeah. That sounds really, really good. Yeah. Man. Well, um, shout out to our uh, YouTube viewers, our uh, first time uh, listeners, uh, anybody that stuck with, stuck with us through just waiting for the next uh, episode. I know everybody probably been waiting for episode 10, probably heard us talk about episode 10 during episode nine and everything we were going to come and talk about. And we did do a we did do a podcast. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did <laughs> yeah, do one, man. We had, we had some like, technical difficulties in the middle of it, but um, so we had to yeah. stop. And then we had some plans that we wanted to do around, like I want to say February, March, that we couldn't do, and we'll get into all of that stuff uh, real soon. But I just want to say we appreciate yeah. all the listeners. Um, I got it. We got a couple hats. Uh, we got some more merch coming, but I mean, we just pretty much ground zero. You know, we ground zero again. I'm um, just trying to get this thing started and going. Um, I'll do. But we back though, man. <laughs> yeah. I, most, I most definitely want to tell them out there, man. I got so many hits up. Like, where you guys at? What you guys doing? Hey, we back, man. Yeah, life. Get that yeah, out there. We back. Yeah, life been. Life been. Uh, life and <laughs> life been doing what it yeah life been doing what it does we gonna get into all of that stuff it's a lot of stuff that we we need to kind of clear out before we enter the next uh phase of the podcast anyway a lot of a okay. lot of personal stuff that you know i know i need to talk about that we need to get into a lot of personal stuff that you know damon you know uh, went through as well um first off let's address that san fran hat it's a nice hat Oh yeah, man. So, man, let me tell you guys, man. I'm, um, everybody already know I'm a 49er fan, man. But everybody also know, you know, we just drafted a quarterback, man, in the first round, third pick, man. And I don't want to get too much into to all that to all the 49er stuff, but yeah, man, we headed back to the Super Bowl, man. You know, <laughs> and I know, every, <laughs> I know everybody know that we we we. we yeah. We on our way back, so for all the listeners out there, you know, get on the bandwagon now, guys. Uh, we headed that way. Still the off season, yeah, man. man. Y'all just like straight up from like off season to Super Bowl. Huh? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, 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 yeah, we got a pretty good team, man. We, we, we headed that way, man. Yeah. See you guys there. She had Super Bowl. Hey, I, I kind of miss Cali. I kind of miss uh, San Diego. I got my taco hat on. Um, the yeah, I see you, man. <laughs> The, uh, yeah, I see that, man. The hospitality. I know a lot of people talk about Southern hospitality and uh, stuff like that. Cust well, customer service and stuff like that, I do want to say I miss uh, California. 
Uh, the hospitality in California is definitely great. A eh? uh, San Diego always greeted with a smile, always greeted. Um, and then people are always smiling. You know what I'm saying? So uh, both the elements and each element individually is a great thing when it comes to customer service. This has been a little different out here and uh, on the East Coast, you know, um, and I'm from the East Coast. So it, I got to reintegrate with that experience that, you know, customer service where you might not even get looked at, stuff like that, you know. Oh, man, you bring that up, dude. So let me tell you, man. So I go to Arkansas, man, like time we time. We was it? No, we put we go to um, airport, Dallas airport. Was mm -hmm. it Dallas airport? The worst, Dall the Dallas worst, airport. The worst airport in the world. DFW, bro. We went up in there, man. And we getting something to eat, and this lady talking to us like, "You right, man." I, when you say "Don't look at you," ain't even looking at me, man. And I, the time I got down, I'm telling Ella, man, that's probably some of the worst customer service that I ever seen, man. Like, like talk, and then, and I, and I don't even get mad at like when people do whatever they do. I don't even get upset, man. Like I'm, I'm positive as hell, man. But it wasn't the fact that she wasn't looking, and she also talking over. Like when she know what I was going to order. Mm -hmm. She talked over me, man. I really was getting on my nerves, man. Like, let me finish my order, man. I know you probably do this all the time. I know you know it, but you don't have to talk over me. That's crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it was some of the worst customer service, man. Yeah, I remember dropping off some um, boxes, uh, no, some trash at the landfill. And one of the dudes at the landfill, you know, I'm like, hey, good morning, man. And, you know, he's like, what you say? I was like, uh, good morning. W what's up? What you say? I was like, I was saying, I was saying good morning to you. He's like, oh, my bad, man. <laughs> my bad. Like, I'm like, yeah, like, it's like, and we don't do that. It's oh, like a lost man. art over here, man. So I definitely miss that yeah. about California. Everybody's happy for just the sake of being happy. Um, and I, I miss yeah. it. If I could retire there, I will. So I do want to declare that as well. If I could retire in California. Okay. Will, okay. Man. But I'm um, right yeah. now, I'm on the East Coast. Um, but let's, let's. But that that got to be a good thing, though, right? They gotta be a good thing, closer to home, closer to family. You know, closer to home. Always gotta be a good thing. Closer to though. home and family. We, you know, we bought the house. I'm hooking up stuff. I mean, you know, I've been waiting to put this uh, home theater in my basement, this projector, stuff like that. So that was a big thing for me. Oh yeah. But um, yeah. What have you been going through during this time that you know we've been away? Oh man, so hey. First off, man, so this COVID thing is still a big deal for me, man, mm -hmm. right? So one of the biggest thing is, though, every time I get ready to get these vaccinations, something happens. Yeah, yeah, because I was right? going to say, Either, I um, vaccine. Dude, <laughs> even I'm close, I'm close contact, I'm something. Every time is my time to get this, you know, to get this vaccine, man. Yeah. So I caught COVID. Mm. Right, so actually, my whole family caught COVID. Right, right, and that was so we, we were lined up to do an episode. Right, I think we were. We yeah, had found a space to maybe start back, and then the whole family caught COVID. Yeah, okay, caught COVID. Yeah, and um, the kids, of course, they didn't get no symptoms or anything like that. But me and the wife, man, we caught it pretty good, man. Mm. We caught it pretty good, man. My temperature stayed above a hundred for like at least three, four days straight. Man, so it was pretty rough, coughing, all that type of stuff. But, so, got out of that, got done, good to go. So, I did get my first vaccination now, though. So, uh -huh. now I'm waiting. So, next week I get to get my second one. Then I got to, of course, wait to get that two weeks after to get immune or whatever. But, man, I'm, I'm, I'm finally think I'm going to get this <laughs> vaccination stuff done, man. So, yeah, COVID, played a, COVID played a pretty good part of of that uh, back on the ships like i said before back on the ships now so that's good going to school you know got a lot of stuff going on um, my wife got a lot of stuff going on kids graduating spending a lot of money you know how that goes you know um but man other than that young my young boy he's in sports so i'm enjoying that him out there being competitive and he really he really coming in his own being competitive now man like he really want to go out there and win so I'm, I'm liking to see that different side of him because a lot of times he go out there and just want to play, want to be with his friends. But now he's actually getting a competitive side to him, man. So I'm liking that. So, That's yeah, man. So what's been going on with you, man? I know you got a lot going on. You've been having a lot going on since you left San Diego anyway, from deployment yeah. to where you at now. 
Yeah, so I want to say we when well, we did our last podcast the day after Christmas. Is that when we recorded the day after Christmas? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, so it was like the day yeah. after Christmas, and then we were supposed to re- we we were supposed to record uh, two more days after that. I think the twenty eighth we 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 were going to record, um, and we did record. Um, but then I think it was like the twenty ninth or something like that. I had to leave. I had to go to start PBS, yeah. which is a pre pre deployment yeah. uh, sequestration. So the pre yeah. the pre deployment sequestration was it was like. Uh, I can't remember, uh, I think like 21 days or something like that, right? Like three weeks. And that was us being uh, pretty much uh, secluded to the ship, to quarantine, right? So, yeah. and that yeah. was like the first, that was like some of this stuff is patchy now because it was so long ago. Like so much stuff happened since then. Um, I was recording. <laughs> Matt told me, uh, why don't you do like a video diary? Like, <laughs> Avatar, remember Avatar, the dude, uh, he had like the video every day. He just start like becoming a shell of his old self or whatever like that. So Matt was like, hey, why don't you do a, <laughs> a video diary? So I did like I, I started one. Right. But it just I never think that I could just work on the camera. You know what I'm saying? I think like I need, you know, two yeah. people. So, but but it, it was all right. You know, you start going through the snacks you got, stuff like that. But the so the first couple of days of the uh, PDS was cool. It was like you know we were uh, broken down in three sections. Um, the first section had duty for three days straight. The second section had duty for the next three days, and the third section had duty for the next three days. And I happened to be in duty section three, and we started with duty section one. So I lucked up. So for the first six days, I didn't have duty. So that was like you know crazy. Um, and then it's, it was like minimal uh like the most minimal amount of the most the most minimum amount of contact possible so pretty much you are uh uh just uh quarantining in your 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 rack or whatever for the most part for the like the first three days and some of this time it was contractors coming on board that had to do work so some of this time with the contractors, we had to definitely go remain in place. I think that's what we called it. I, I can't remember. Like I said, it's kind of patchy. Yeah, probably remain in place. But yeah. for the period of time, we had to go, you know, remain in place. So I can't lie, man. Like the first three days, amazing. Um, stockpile of podcasts, TV shows, books, all types of stuff. I probably ran through most of that stuff on the first three days i binge watch money heist <laughs> i binge watched uh so many shows man uh i binge watched so many shows i can't even like name them all some of them i totally forgot about but um top boy was one money heist was another one a bunch of foreign shows uh alice in borderland was on there somewhere some stuff that i might not have watched um at home i had time to you know watch it and chill and it was like just yeah the ogre man just in that <laughs> like a grizzly bear you know what i'm saying just in the rack man the yeah. whole time um which was decent it was just me and another electrician um it was a short crew the rest of the people were in a hotel um and then duty came in the same time this happening uh my wife is back on land going through the process of trying to buy a house long distance mm. so same time this happened and my wife is back on land going through the process of trying to buy a house uh long distance so i think it was one of my first duty days that we were in that last leg of having to close out on a house so i would have needed somebody to stand in because they they needed to see me uh so she needed to do like a facetime call for me to buy you know for us to make that purchase um, they needed positive uh, identification in me and they need to see me and stuff like that. So uh, we managed, you know, to get that done while that was happening. Uh, class, you know, uh, the, when you go into Japan, the class started to learn how to drive and uh, learn some of the laws. And oh, yeah. Pretty much an MWR, Liberty. So you get, you guys did that in San Diego? Yeah, we did it in San Diego. Some people do it when they get oh, there. Oh, man. But, yeah, some people do it yeah, when yeah. they get there. But, but, but we did it in San Diego. Um, which was, which was cool. Uh, a lot of people logged on just kind of watching that. So that took time. That took time that when, when those days start starting, you started to see people like, man, like people kind of was happy just being in the rack. You know what I'm saying? Um, in that time yeah. we were eating what we call deep perm sandwiches. Um, it's just the cold cut sandwiches. 
Um, so we had all. Oh sandwiches. no! Yeah, yeah. So we call them deep perm, but if you're not from our ship and you don't really know what the term is, it's just that that same cold cut sandwich that's um, wrapped in plastic. That same cold cut sandwich. So, um, but that's all we had for like I want to say the first three days, but it might have been like eight days because the galley was down. I just it's a blur to me. I think it was more like eight days where you started to figure out ways like me i'm putting chips in a sandwich i'm taking it out oh, yeah. bun, heating it up you got to find different ways oh, to yeah. make this sandwich and then they also had the breakfast sandwiches the frozen but i never liked those people like those but i never liked the ones you just heat up thomasville and all that uh i never liked those so i i, I don't eat those um so I either wasn't eating anything or I was finding something else to eat. But the deep perm sandwiches, that I can't lie, that was my go-to. Um, some people didn't eat those, you know what I'm saying? But um, yeah. so we got a deep, that's all we got is one uh, pretty much menu item for I think six to eight days or something like that. Um, and then the other sandwiches. So you got people going through that. And then on the other side of that, you got people just in the hotel. Um, so yeah. just people of all type now i'm thinking now i'm thinking they got the better the better deal did they did it feel I, like they got the better deal they in a hotel the, the, how, the, how, how was they experienced the better deal for who you know so so yeah. first uh, another personal um additive here is i was supposed to be transferred from the ship already before the yeah. pds would have started i was supposed to leave in the beginning of december the pds started at the end of december so one of my things was if I'm going to be extended on a ship, then I need to be on the ship because if I'm needed to be on a ship, then like, let's exercise that. Like if I'm on a ship, then let me be on a ship. Yeah. So I wanted the PDS on a ship, but I would have preferred to P- I think it depends who you are. So we got gamers, we got a bunch of different, you know, kind of people. I think a lot of the gamers was were okay with the 18 to 21 days uh, PDS and with nobody else around because um, they just threw the game on and stuff like that. Some of them told me they were okay, but I wouldn't have been okay just in a room by myself because all of them were in a room by, them, yeah. you know, by themselves. And even some of them, I think we had a couple, you know, a couple issues with maybe like one or two people that was uh, PDS. Um, it's something I'm leaving out that's probably going to come back to me. Oh, so during this time, we had to get COVID tests. So that was like the first of my COVID tests. So the day that we all got together for the PDS, which I think was the 29th of December. Um, so right before New Year's, um, we had to take a COVID. We had to take all together. We had to take three COVID tests. So we had to take one yeah. uh, in the beginning, one midpoint, and one when everybody integrated back to the ship. So, and that was the first time we got a COVID test. So um, I've, I think I'm like seven to eight COVID tests in now, but that was my first one. So that was my first time feeling that thing go all the way up my nose and that it burned. You saw people with the, like the ugly face. It was crazy, <laughs> man. It hurt, yeah. you know, that first yeah. time it hurt. Um, so we took the COVID test. They left, they went to the hotel. I don't know, man. Do you think that, you think that, which one would you prefer? Well, I probably would have chose the ship too yeah. because I know I could have got stuff done while I was on the ship, getting ready to 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 deploy or whatever. But you just said you couldn't do a whole lot. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Really, yeah. I don't know, man. Yeah, we PMS was. I don't know. Like PMS was like minimal. Like everything was kind of like everything got pushed. So it was really chill, you know, chill out time. The reason why I knew the ship would have fared better for me because I was going to be around people. Like it was people within yeah. seven feet of me. You know, if I went out to talk on yeah. the phone, if I went out to do something, it was people around. Yeah. See, I don't think that would have been my, my, my case would have been the people. The only reason why, if I wouldn't have picked the ship, I would have picked the room is only because man, when, when I, you know, when we on a ship, man, like, I'm thinking, not thinking as into we're going to be all isolated. I'm more thinking, man, when I'm on that ship, people coming to me 24-7. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, if I would have went to the room, I know I would have probably got that relaxed time, that chill time or whatever. But you say you guys isolate and stuff, yeah, so yeah, it yeah, probably would have been better yeah, being on the ship. they can't come to you. Like, you should, yeah. like they can't. Like, it's, yeah. it's just you pretty much isolated. Like, you can't be. I mean, I, I took it. I mean. 
I'm a rule follower. So, you know, I took it uh, like to the max. Even one of my sellers, my one seller yeah. who stayed around, I used to mess with her, you know, hey, Chief, can you, nah, like, I can't be nowhere near you. Like, we, we just going to have to wait till <laughs> Chief, you know. Don't, it's don't bad. I feel me. bad about that. Don't hey, call me. I feel bad, <laughs> Chief. I just need, I need some trading. You can't get traded from me right now. We supposed to be socially distanced, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, <laughs> But uh, we, we, we had a, I mean, we had a good time when we were able to kind of start reintegrating, re reintegrating and stuff like that. We did, uh, we, you know, started to do that and it started happening like six to seven days before everybody else came back, you know? So, I mean, I mean, yeah. know, to be completely transparent, I was a little bitter, like, man, dang, yo, I was getting used to this kind of like, just kind of do my own yeah, thing, know, type right? thing. And we got the morning meetings again like that, but you, you, you do though, uh, you got to get your legs back under you um, and stuff like yeah. that. So that's uh, some of the stuff that the XO was pushing. So after the midpoint uh, shot, after the midpoint shot, that's when we were able to, you know, go out and do some stuff like that. A couple of people, I think a couple of people caught COVID like, after the last shot, like coming back onto the ship, coming out of uh, PDS, which was weird. Um, right before we got underway, we had like 13 people uh, catch COVID. They used to call them what? all types of stuff. Yeah, they used to call them like the Oceans. Thir they were like some undesignated. So they called them like the Boatswain's 13, uh, Oceans 13. It's a bunch <laughs> of close contacts, uh, video games, uh, people playing video games, stuff like that. Like people really not um taking the whole social distance thing serious you know what i'm saying um yeah after a while during uh the pds um we were able to start receiving packages we could get at the most two packages on the way no food but at the most two packages even though i know some people some people got food <laughs> Yeah. Some people got food, of course, <laughs> but no food, but at the most, uh, two packages, but that, that Amazon box that's retaped yep. you know, was in that. <laughs> yep. but, um, uh, exactly. So after PDS, uh, right after PDS, we got underway, we got underway for the home port, uh, for a home port shift. Um, and when, when we got underway for a home port shift, uh, that was, you know, a couple of weeks. Uh, the the focus was the home port shift. Uh, got to Japan uh, for at, at that point, you know, um, we closed on a house. Uh, so let me rewind it a little bit. At that point, uh, I mean, you cool with me going in like this? Because it's I got yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, man. Go ahead. Yeah, so at that point, at around I want to say the third, the some some time after the second uh, week of the. PDS of uh, my wife, you know, she, she was feeling sick. It was a so weird sick. She called me, we, we spoke and, um, she kept saying she was feeling sick. It's like, and, and all of this stuff was like what I would think morning sickness was. So I'm like, Hey babe, like, you know, you could be pregnant, you know, and this is something that we wanted to happen for a while. We wasn't yeah. really planning it, but we wanted to happen. And it was actually one of my goals while in California was to have a kid. It was one of the goals I came to the, to, sh to the ship with. So, we, she took the, the pregnancy test and found out she was pregnant, which was like, man, that was like the best news of my life at that point. So yeah. we told, um, man, I told just a few people, I didn't tell a bunch of people, but I told a, a few people about it on a ship. I was happy, excited on a ship. So I told people on a ship, but we didn't tell any of our friends or uh, our family. I don't think we, I don't know when I told you, um, but, um, we, 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 we didn't want to tell too many people about it until, you know, we, some more time passed for reasons like, yeah. you know, you could lose, you know, the baby, stuff like that. So, yeah. um, we found out about that life goes to a high, you know, cause that, it was things that was happening to it. I'm like, yeah, why she, she's kind of acting funny and it's weird and stuff like that. But, um, it was a baby growing, you know, growing in her, you know what I'm saying? So that kind of clarifies some stuff. I'm like, that babe, this whole time I've been thinking you, you was acting funny and it was a whole baby growing in you. I'm glad that I have the answer to, you know, what I was thinking. I ain't know what, you know, yeah, what the thing. Yeah, yeah. but, um, so we find out we pregnant and we start our life changes, you know, the things that we were planning for in the house changes. And you start to think about if the dog will integrate with the baby better. And, uh, you start to think about names, a couple I think it was like a total of like 11 days that went by before we found out that the baby had died. 
like died in her stomach. You know what I'm saying? So we yeah. you know, we found out that uh, she was going. It wasn't going to be a good pregnancy, and she was going uh, unhealthy pregnancy is what they called it, and uh, she was going to have yeah. to get a DNC for a miscarriage. Um, and that was, uh, I think, I, I don't know. I, I might have found out about the pregnancy like right before we got underway for uh japan i want to say um so that might yeah. be like three right after like around the same time everybody came back it was something like that because by the time we got to japan was like as soon as we got to japan it was like like a day or something before i found out that we wasn't having a baby so it was something like that yeah um, so i remember um walking around and you know, just kind of trying to figure out what I was going to do um, as far as who I was, you know, who I was going to talk to, what I wanted to do and stuff like that. I knew the pl only place I wanted to be was with my wife. I knew that for sure. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know. Yeah, how most to, definitely. I didn't necessarily, and I'm a chief, um, but I didn't necessarily know how to communicate that at the time. You know what I'm saying? And one yeah. of the things... One of the things that I thought about in this whole time was, yo, it's a couple of things. That any, well, mostly anything I want to do, I want to be the best that I could be at. So I want to be the best, you know, chief I could be, the best Navy sailor I could be, stuff like that. But I also want to be the best husband that I could be. And I never imagined, you know, a time that um, uh, being the best husband that I could be would affect uh, are not feeling like I was being the best husband that I could be would affect um, my performance as a sailor. You know what I'm saying? I never knew of a time yeah. where those two things would kind of compete against each other. But I, I, I get into that a little bit later. But um, yeah. So I got home. Um, so th so here 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 again for the podcast uh, listeners. Um, the plan was to get here. Um, and I got a friend in Japan. So integrate myself with Japan. And uh, set up shop at my um, homegirl's apartment, um, who I'm going to talk about a little bit later, uh, and start doing a podcast from there. That was our plan, was to do the podcast. I'd be in Japan, you, yeah, know, yeah. you know, in San Diego. But as um, soon as I got to Japan, it was like the next day, I want to say, like a day or two from getting to Japan, I was leaving to come back to San Diego um, because my wife was getting a DNC for a miscarriage. Um and that went as well as it could go. Uh, um, I think I, I, I want to do, I want us to talk to our wives on like an episode or two from now. So I don't want to get too much into uh, the reason why she had a miscarriage, but it's a health, it's a, it's a health reason that, you know, she's still dealing with right now. Um, so that was an ongoing thing through the, through the time that I was in um, on a ship after, after the, the miscarriage. So I only asked to leave for like nine days. I asked to leave the ship for nine days. Yeah. So I was going to be in San Diego. And this was before we knew about any, like, well, we already knew about it, but this was before we knew the extremity or uh, the repercussions or whatever, the fallout of the other health concerns. I'm like, just nine days. Just give me, you know, nine days. So all the command knows from the Red Cross message is that she had a miscarriage. They don't talk about nothing else, uh, just the miscarriage. So... I get home and, and, and it, it, I'm already thinking like all I did was ask for nine days without having all the information. Like I might need more than nine days, but all I did was ask for nine days. Um, and I knew that we were having to get underway again soon for uh, the summer patrol. So um, I went home and that was a, it was an interesting time. Uh, it was different for me to see my wife, uh, you know, weaker than normal uh kind of like yeah. you know need needing help to get in the car covid's happening so i couldn't go in the place it was a weird thing i had just came home just you picked me up you picked me up from the airport and you took me straight to yep. the, did you no you picked me where'd you pick me up from the hospital um man would i pick you yeah, up from? yeah yeah you picked no, me i up took you to the hospital, hospital i think me up from the hospital yeah yeah i took you from the hospital yeah you, and took you up took you home yeah, so it took you. I think so. Yeah, I took, took an home. Uber. Yeah. I took an Uber from the airport. To, I can't. I, I flew out with nothing. Like I flew out with nothing but my book bag. Right. I had the microphones that I had. Uh, I think I had microphones and stuff in there. Um, 
but I flew out with just a book bag. So I got to the air, I, I got to the airport. I took an Uber to the hospital. Um, I walked, you know, Uber dropped me off. I walked in and they were pretty much telling me that my wife was in there. Um, and they were pretty much telling me I couldn't go back and nothing like that. And, um, I gave my wife a hug and a kiss and I looked at the lady and I said, this was enough. Like this was, you know, this was it. I didn't need to do anything else. Um, so they took her, um, in the back and then you came, you know, you came and got me. And when I got to my house, uh, you know, to our surprise, um, her mom came. So, uh, her mom was there. Her mom loved her to death, man. Her mom was a big help, a great help. And I appreciate her. Um, and I appreciate you for coming to get me, um, on a very short no notice and stuff like that. So, um, her, her mom came, uh, helped us out again. I was home for nine days and in those nine days, we got to experience, uh, Valentine's day. Uh, we got to do that together. So we had a nice one. I wanted to get her, a, I wanted to get her a big, uh, gift. Um, she wanted her Valentine's day to be wonder woman themed. Um, and if you look, it's hard to see, but I got a wonder woman, uh, piece of art that a friend of mine actually does. Um, but uh matter of fact, any like it's uh what a uh, dollar art club, something like that. Um yeah, so I, I definitely want I I'll I'll post up something about that on a podcast, uh Instagram yeah. or something like that. But um yeah, so um she wanted a Wonder Woman themed uh party and uh so I bought like, you know, the uh um costume and stuff like that, cosplay stuff. But we couldn't do it. Um it just wasn't the time she wasn't going to be able to just all we knew was that she was pregnant. So she wasn't going to be able to fit into that kind of costume and stuff like that. But uh, <laughs> we couldn't do it because of this now, you know, so um, I, I definitely did want Valentine's Day to be a big thing. Her birthday is two weeks after Valentine's Day. So I definitely wanted Valentine's Day to be a cool thing. So uh, we, we had a really good Valentine's Day and I left uh, shortly after that. I had to go back. And then that whole experience was you know, crazy, man. So, and going back, um, you know, you got to take a test before you fly out. I had to pay for that out of pocket, like a hundred dollars. Um, I'm sure it's other resources, but I was two days out and, um, I went to the military hospital. They said, Oh yeah, we don't do that here. You got to go to this place out in town. So I went to the place out in town and they like, yes, it's a hundred dollars. I'm like, it's no military discount. It's nothing that they like, nah, you just, (laughs) you're good to go. So it was the rapid. Um, I flew out. I got to Japan. I think I took like two tests uh, when I got back to Japan. And then when I got to Japan, I had to go straight to a quarantine. It was a 14-day quarantine, but it's a little bit more than 14 days because you got to wait for your test results to come back. So yeah, I was quarantining for um, for 14 Probably about 19 days. days huh? Yeah, it was like 17 like 17. Um, and it was a crazy experience. I want to say, um, so before I left, I had got the first Moderna shot. Um, and then some point at some point in my quarantine, I knew I had to get the second um, shot, but, um, I had a, a roommate, which I wasn't. So, you know, I get, I get to, I get to, um, I get to the uh, TPU where we're going to uh, quarantine at. And I'm like, man, I'm going to have my own room, chill, FaceTime my wife. It's crazy time. Uh, we do, you know, this, this, that. Um, I get to the room. Well, I ain't get to the room yet. I get to the lobby and I'm um, talking to, I'm like, hey, so, am, you know, am I going to have a roommate? He's like, as long as nobody else show up, you good. Then somebody shows up with the most bags. I've ever seen, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he got like six bags, but he coming in like check in, check in. So it was like, and he was an ensign too. So I'm like, all right, all right, I'm gonna be in here with a, I'm gonna be in here with an ensign. Um, and uh, but he was cool. Uh, we we I don't want to get too much into the experience of quarantining. It was really another time to catch up on tv shows and stuff like that i think i had a migraine like every day i was going through caffeine withdrawals and then i got the second shot and the second shot gave me chills another migraine stuff like that yeah um after 
that we took we um took the test uh, so you know it's almost it's weird because you got to sneak out of the building oh so let's talk about quarantine for a second right the food did you see my post about the food that they were serving me man <laughs> hot garbage man you know oh my goodness yeah i hear you yeah so you this me? food was disgusting man. Yeah. so every yeah 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 you just coming in i think we got a little lag but every meal came with an orange right every meal came with an orange which i didn't mind that in the glass <laughs> of water um the first day they gave me eggs man and i love eggs eggs like one of my favorite foods so i'm like all right let me eat these eggs disgusting you know what i'm saying tastes like Tastes like they dipped them in toilet water, you know what I'm saying? And then oh. put on a plate and then like <laughs> let them chill for like an hour. Oh my and then, goodness. You know, man. served them. So So my uh, question to that is so that was you you can't change nothing? You can't say nothing, you can't call mean? them, you can't nothing. Now nah, this coming from the galley, the base galley. This the food that the base galley serving so they just mm, giving them mm, the doors mm, you know mm. what i'm saying so just dropping them off in front of the door some people got them from their shit you know what i'm saying yeah um and that would have been cool um i think if my ship was giving me the food it would have been cool but when i when we were first getting the food i'm thinking it was coming from the ship and i'm like what are you doing? like this is crazy like this ain't it you know what i'm saying so i yeah, even told man. the people i'm like hey right i'm like yo write the ship names on these boxes so you know we know we could differentiate but then i found <laughs> out it was all coming from the galley i kept looking at his food and i'm like and it took me dude it took me i don't know what was on my mind but it took me like three days to figure this out like you know we kept getting <laughs> the same meals i'm like your ship making the same food as my ship a nasty Salisbury steak, like they both like is it happening at the same time? Like it took like three days to be like, oh man, we must both be getting food from the galley. So you know, I'm loading up, I'm loading up on Popeyes. So here's another element: yeah. you could order food from uh, uh, while you quarantining. You could leave your room and order food. So I'm like, all right, I'm quarantining, right? I'm supposed to be stuck in this room. First off, I got a roommate, which is weird. Second off, we have we share a bathroom. We got like a joint rooms with another oh, room, man. and we share a bathroom, which means that you got that one critical time where you might now. make a mistake and leave the door unlocked when you when you pooping and you taking a shit, and the other dude might walk in or whatever like that. Yeah, so it could be four people. It was a senior chief in the other room, um, and we never had that moment. But you know, they give you one roll of toilet paper. They like, yeah, this is on us. And I'm like, well, what's the other toilet? Who the other toilet paper on? They like, you got to buy that or whatever like that. So that happened. So I went and bought like 20 or 20. <laughs> well, I went and got somebody to get me like a 14 roll of toilet paper or something like that. Just to, you know, just to be able to show the dude that was already in. I like, you know, it's like kind of like breaking bread. You know what I'm saying? Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other dude that was already in the room probably been he probably would have been going hoard his stuff and all that i'm like boom let's get this toilet paper i, I want to put a hooks around the bathroom so we can hang our tiles and you know stuff like that up just trying to make it like more homely if we're gonna be here for you know 14 days the people that was taking yeah. care of me in the middle of this uh in the middle of this quarantine talk the people that was taking care of me was um my divo uh, Ensign, I'll, I'll say names, um, j just out of love right now. Ensign Tad, uh, Gabrielle Tad, my uh, divo at the time, she was Electro. She really, really helped me out. I appreciate her on a lot of fronts. Um, my EM1, who's no longer on the ship, uh, Clinton Jenkins, uh, he was, he, he came through for me a lot with the energy drinks. I get into why I need the energy drinks in a second, but he came through for me a lot. And my friend, uh, Carol Thompson, uh, OSC over at ATG, over there in Japan. Uh, she's a listener of the podcast too, so she 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 a fan of you too, Damon. So uh, big shots, yeah. big shots. <laughs> yeah, so she really she was it, man. Her and it, between her and EM one and Electro helped out a lot too. But between her and EM one, man, I felt like a king. Uh, I had cleaning supplies. I had food. She cooked. Uh, if she cooked, she bought me food. If she didn't cook, 
She bought me food. I don't. I owe her so much. I owe Carol so much. And the AM1 was hooking me up with Gatorades and energy drinks. So I started, you know, I take pre-workout. I was taking pre-workout and working out, so I started getting caffeine withdrawals. I started getting caffeine withdrawals when I was in San Diego with my wife. Um, and they got just unbearable. They get they got really unbearable when that was all I had to deal with in a quarantine was the caffeine withdrawals. And then whatever uh, my roommate was doing, most likely like an ASMR video or something like that. But um, so I'm getting caffeine withdrawals, and, like, I got nothing but – just that to deal with so um eventually i asked i was trying my best to go through it actually to just go through all the caffeine withdrawals but i couldn't yeah so i asked em1 to bring me some uh some energy drinks so he went he got me energy drinks he got me some bars so when i got tired of eating popeyes every day our pizza i wanted to start working out and practicing my planks and doing all the other crazy stuff so then em1 uh bought me stuff I'm um, gonna take care of that. Electro brought me some my my devo bought me some stuff. Um, they brought me clothes and stuff stuff that was in my uh, in my rack stuff like that to get ready for um, just getting back you know underway stuff like that. So well to get me through the PDS. Well we were going to get back underway while I was going well the quarantine we were going to get back underway while I was going through the quarantine, right? So. In the quarantine, um, the plan was to do some episodes, but that's when you and the family had um, COVID. So we didn't do it um, then. And then you called me. um, Yeah, I I don't want to minimize how bad this food was, though. Please remember that the food was horrible. Like that was no <laughs> nobody should have to go through 14 days of quarantine and eat like that like y'all should be a little bit more focused on what people got to eat and that might sound bougie stuff like a lot of people be like i wish i could go through that was horrible i ran into like a junior seller because you could wash your clothes you could lead a run man you could wash your clothes you could go order food at a common area and stuff like that um so it's kind of like contact um yeah you, it, um, no, it, I, it, it is contact no it's, it's contact. contact right yeah, so it's it's not even like a full, you know what I'm saying? But I ran into a junior seller yeah. in the laundry room. He said, yo, what's up, chief? I'm like, hey, what's up, man? How you been? Boom, you know, he had a a, a family emergency. So he, I'm like, man, I can't take this quarantine thing. This dude was loving it. You know what I'm saying? He was like, man, me and my roommate, we, like, we watch movies. We've been playing video games. He's like, this is the best thing ever. You know, I'm like, man, I'm trying to, you know, not be too attached to my roommate. Just chill, you know, boom. That was crazy, man. It was another thing I wanted to bring up about that period. Oh, a seller. I don't know what this seller's rank was, man, but they corrected me. And <laughs> he corrected me in the room, man. What? <laughs> so like, yeah, we got we had these little trash cans, like maybe like these little real small trash cans, and we put them outside the room. And as soon as my food came in, my food hit the trash can. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes it never yeah. even made it in the room. I slide it from the room. I might bring it in to take a picture, then I'll put it in the trash can. It's like arms reach outside of the door. So for a moment in time, you know, I go reach out to put my trash in a trash can and the seller sees me. He's like, you gotta have your mask on. I'm like, yo, I'm <laughs> I'm in my room. You know what I'm saying? He's like, Yeah, but you still need to have your mask on. You're not in your room, you out your room. You know, I'm like, I'm out my room to put trash in a trash can. And I would have been back in my room if you didn't stop me to talk to me, man. You know what I'm saying? And he's like, <laughs> no, nah, you got to have your mask on in common areas. I'm like, yeah, like since, since when? If I'm six feet, he's like, the thing just changed. Boom. And I'm like, man, like, I'm like, where'd I sat? He's like, I ain't got to show you where it's at. I'm like, nah, you, you got to show me. I'm the kind. So now it's like, I'm just going back and forth with him. Um, I'm like, you got to show me. I'm the kind of person, you know, like where this hat in the instruction, man. You're not about to just tell me this, that, that. So now, and I'm like, yo, and all this time I'm out here longer now because of you, man. You know what I'm saying? So he was like, he was getting like riled up. I'm getting riled up too. He don't know my rank. You know, he don't know I'm a chief, none of that stuff. So, um, and I like that. I mean, it was kind of fun. Um, but I, my, my thing is this, if it's something that's changed, or if it's an instruction thing, you're going to have to show me that in black and white. You could be right. I got no yeah. issue with you being right. And that's what I was trying to explain to him. I got no issue with you being right, man. 
but you got to show me that in black and white or whatever. We So, you know, after we had that exchange, um, we I go back in the room. My roommate goes and looks it up. My, well, well, during the exchange, my roommate popped up. He popped tall, man. He's like, what's going on? You know, he's an instant. He's like, what's going on, Chief? I'm like, nah, it's all, it's all good, man. You know, I thought he was about to uh, pop his collar on a young cell or something like that. I don't know what he was going to do. But um, I'm like, nah, it's all good. It's all good. Then he went and researched, looked it up. Um, I looked it up right after him. It's crazy because whatever instruction that the, the guy was referencing, it did actually change like the day before. So he was right. But again, I'm okay with you being right, but you not telling me that yeah. I got to do something and I didn't read it and you can't tell me where to find it. Like you can't show me the instruction and you can't tell me where to find it. Um, and that's not, yeah. you know, that's not me being rebellious, but that's me being a man and responding to the energy that you given me, you know, his energy yeah. was, I'm, just, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not just going to do what you say if you can't back it up. You know what I mean? Like, I got you. You you right. I'm with that 100%. I mean, you can. it's like me going out there and I'm telling these sailors to go do this. And this, 2021, a sailor going to ask you, what did you find at? Where's your reference? Yeah. You know what I mean? For that. And and you we can't get mad about that anymore. You know what I mean? If a sailor challenges you about your reference, you can't get mad about that. Yeah. You just got to let them, you know, either you don't know, you go back and look it up or, you know, and you tell them yeah. and, and, it's that yeah. easy. And I try, and that's why I try my best to be, to be prepared to tell somebody stuff. Like, I'm not just going to tell you something yeah. that I haven't done the research, on, research on or whatever like that. You know, I'm on the side, yeah. of, I'm on the side of having something to be able to explain uh, to somebody. Well, I don't know if that's good. I don't know if that's bad. But I'm not a dictator. This ain't leadership for the sake of leadership. Um, yeah. I'm going to take the time to show you what I'm talking about to let you know it's in writing. And that's how I am. I'm a. If you giving me an instruction and you just telling me one part of it, I want to read the rest of it too, man. Like where is that? Let me let me see. I got all the time in the world in this room. You know what I'm saying? So I get out of. Uh, let's fast forward a little bit. I get out of uh, quarantine, right? So I'm out of quarantine. Um, you know, goodbyes to my, my roommate that I spent my last 17 days with or whatever like that. We got our uh, last test. We got our last test. And then um, three days later when the results came out. So it was like we got our test on like a Friday. So now I'm mad because it's like, man, the results ain't coming out till Monday, man. Like, so we got the results on Monday. And, you know, we had talked, you know, um, I think that day. Like, yo, let's go. Let's do the pod. Let's, you know, let's get it. I think we had a guest lined up. Um, yeah. And then that day, that same day, like at like eight in the morning, you know, I got a, a, a text from my department head talking about, um, well, the text read like, uh, it was an email, like, Hey, we need you back today. So literally the day, like I got out one night and then the next morning, um, I was on a helo on my way back to my ship. Um, and mm. I said all of that, <laughs> but this is where the story starts, right? So I get back to my ship and, um, I can't lie, man. Uh, and I didn't know none of this stuff I could predict. None of this stuff I, I knew. Um, all I knew was my wife still had an impact, like a, a, a real world, uh, health concern that I, that took over my my mental my um psyche and uh at that point a lot of my emotional um being at at, at that point that's all i knew um was what my wife yeah. was going through she was still in pain and she still had and still has something um with her health that that, that needs to be addressed so we so i get back to the ship so the first night I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to see anybody. Like a lot of people didn't even know I was back. I'm like, I'm going to go make my rack. I'm going to go get my stuff together. Um, I was told I wasn't going to stand watch until the next day. Anyway, I roll right into the rotation. So I'm already set up for the watch rotation. So I'm already ready to go. We stand in like six hours on and 15 off. Is it six? Uh, yeah. Something like that. Six. Yeah. Six hours on and 15 off, which that first and hearing it 
it didn't sound good, but it was good, especially after the next watch that was introduced was incorporated. Yeah. Um, so that watch was, you know, after a while, it was dope. Like, so six hours on 15 off, um, and I'm standing EAL, right? And um, where I said, this is where my story starts. I, I, no, no, at first I wasn't standing EAL. I was standing uh, another watch. I don't want to get too specific with watches for anybody that don't. I was standing FC, you know, but for anybody that don't know what that is, then they just don't know what that is. But um, so I had an EAL, um, and, you know, we stand and watch. It's everything, you know, is uh, kind of going. But I remember, like, my first couple of days on board, man, I was – out of it, man. Um, just out of it. Uh, uh, I, I'm not even gonna act like I wanted to be there or say that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, f- yeah. First off, I'm extended on a ship already, and now my wife is going through some stuff, and I want to be there for her. Um, and yeah. at this point, we bought our house. Um, we own the house, so now we got this whole house that she's still in California in the military housing. Um, so we still paying that and then we got the mortgage. Um, so all I'm wanting to do is get home. Cause I feel like I like more could happen if I'm at home. Cause we're, we're a team, we're a unit. So I feel like, and even though her mom was, um, home, her mom was, uh, at my house for a specific reason to make magic that only moms can make, you know what I'm saying? So I was coming to the house to make magic that only husbands can make. And at that time, some of that stuff, just what my wife's health, she probably wasn't going to be able to do. So, um, but I'm not, I'm on a ship. Um, and I remember when I, I remember when the baby died, I want to go back here for a second. When I, when I first found out the baby died, um, I had, uh, another, uh, seller. I won't say his rate, but I'll say his name. His name is uh, Chad. Um, he, he was, you know, we were going through our, our journeys together. He was having a baby. Um, and, you know, he came up, he's like, look, this is chief. This is the kind of stuff you got to expect. You know, you're going to be looking forward to boom, boom, boom. And he, you know, I looked at him and I was like, hey, I got to tell you something. And I was trying to avoid telling him um, just because I didn't want to tell everybody. And plus, like, this guy, like, really holds a, like, a really special place in my heart. Like, it's people that does that. So um, he's like, I, I was like, hey, you know, I'm not like the baby died. He's like, oh, man, she, you, know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sorry to hear that. Boom. Yeah. Um uh, and I'll I'll get more into him um as well into the story. But so I'm on uh I come in, uh I'm on uh watch and he's my he's on watch too. Uh it's me, him and we got our E out and he's like talking to me, you know, it's like the first day. And uh he's like, you know, he knows I'm distant. I'm like not there, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm like distant. Like I I, yeah. I, I grab like some uh, some reading, some CNO reading a book or something. And I'm like, just wanting to, and he's like, what's up? I'm like, yo, I really like, don't want to do this right now. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, just talk. Like, I don't want to have fun. I don't want to joke. You know how it is on a ship. Like it's going to be banter. Yeah. Y'all going to be joking. Y'all going to be talking shit. Um, and I just didn't feel like doing that right now. My mind is not here. It's, it's on my wife. I want to be in my sorrows, man. I want to be in this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is what I want to go through. Um, and it was dark. Um, it was a, another seller, a first class who, a GSC one who came up to me. Um, and he was like, yo chief, this was like a couple days in. He's like, yo chief. Um, I had, I think I said something and he was like, damn chief, like you coming with that energy. Like I never would have thought like I would see this from you. And I'm like, what you talking about? Uh, he's like, just like, just like, damn, like you like kind of like, it was almost like, it was like kind of like you don't want to be here type. And it's obvious, you know? And then from that, that, that there, like that there was the click for me after that conversation we had, I snapped back. I snapped back. And that was a lot of the conversation me and you was having a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. But I snapped back yeah. to like, yo, I gotta, like, I can't, they can't see this. Um, I, I gotta be, be, you know, I gotta still motivate. Be you. Yeah. I gotta still motivate. Like, and I didn't even know I wasn't really doing, I didn't even know it was that obvious, but this guy, like 
I, if I could say this, like this guy knows me, like, you know, he's worked around me to yeah. the point that I'm sure he's examining. He understands my uh, temperament and things like that. So I, I'm sure he could see and just kind of person he is. I'm sure he could see through some defense mechanisms and stuff like that. So he knew it. He brought it up. It was kind of in a joking manner. Well, it was lighthearted. And um, but I took it to heart. I'm like, yo, I can't do that you know what i'm saying so um i quickly got back to you know motivating being happy and i realized that it was something people needed you know especially coming from from me you know and that's what the amount the reputation that you know you me some of us have on these ships like it's sellers that actually look up to us a lot you know what i'm saying so uh so the Ian, well, I say the Ian one, Ian one Underwood and GSE one McPherson, like they were the two yeah. um, guys that like really helped me get back to some state of normalcy. Um, with Ian one Underwood is pretty much easy because he's always like he's my guy. Like I love him to death, but he always has some frantic state of abnormalcy. You know what I'm saying? So, 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 oh, so, I know. So, 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 oh, I know. So, so, and that's like the guy I like. That's who I want to see. Talk, you know, yeah. I want that in one. So it's like, um, it's like if Ian one could be Ian one, then I could be, you know, me. And I can't be this guy. That's left up to Ian one to be. You know what I'm saying? So, but that's like again, man. That's he's one of my. Man, like, uh, I hope he does give me that call when he makes it and he said he's going to give you that call because I definitely want to, I will fly miles to, to go see this guy, uh, put the, put, put the anchors on. But, um, so, uh, he really helped me through it. He was, me and him still watched the whole time together through the whole process. Um, but, and then, but the GSE one was the one who, uh, who pretty much, uh, snapped me back to, you know, where I should be. Yeah. Um, what I want to get into, um, talking about you good, you good, you still good, you still here with me, man? Yeah, I'm here, man. Okay, so what I want to get into talking about is invisible uh, warfare, um, and uh, um, internal battles, and I want to get into um, just me having been a leader, a chief, a first class, or whoever I was, and even if I thought I was considering it, sometimes I might've been minimizing it, um, for some of my sellers. Um, during the time that I was in, um, during the time that I was going through quarantine, um, one of my sellers, uh, had a, a suicide, uh, uh one of my sellers had a, a, a mental break, break, breakdown and had the leadership. Um, and, you know, while I was gone, um, you know, do you think, mm. you know, we got the superhero mentality. Do, do I think if I was there, maybe, but what if I was just prolonged and uh, inevitable, you know what I'm saying? So, but that was, yeah. it. but, um, so, you know, I get back to, a minim a minimized, uh, shop, a minimized work, work center with junior sellers and, and stuff like that. But, um, I do want to say if I've ever, if you ever felt like if you're a junior seller and you ever came up to me and you had an issue and you ever felt you, you had an issue, um, either you came up to me or you didn't come up to me. Cause that's the part I really want to talk about, man, is when people don't come up to you. Um, and it was minimized. I didn't consider it. I didn't give it enough time. Um, I want to formally apologize. Um, and I'm doing that because, the whole time I was back on the ship, up until a certain point, uh, it was another uh, snapping point for me. Um, I was dealing with like an internal battle. Like I was dealing with um, a battle in my mind. You know what I'm saying? And that was just me being halfway on the ship and halfway at home, you know? Um, and that plays a part in everything, man. That plays a part into leading a division. Um, standing in front of them every yeah. day, uh, having to motivate them. Uh, that plays a part in um, when you find out that you about to be standing watch and you about to be the EL, right? So if you're not familiar with the Navy, um, I can't, I'm not going to get into it too much, but um, 
the EI was the engineering officer to watch. And for an engineer, it's different, you know, different um, departments, uh, weapons, uh, people. You got combat systems. You got some information uh, uh, ratings and stuff like that. But then we got engineers, electricians, mechanics, and stuff like that. For uh, engineers, the EI is pretty much the the plant manager on the highest level that you could be for the ship. That's the person that's in charge of all the propulsion, uh, water, the electricity, and stuff like that for whatever the duration of that person's watch is, right? So we got off the six-hour watch rotation. Then we went on to this weird, nasty, like three-on, three-off, three-on rotation, right? It was weird, right? Um, uh, but um, in finding that out, I also found out that I was going to have to stand EI. Um, me personally, I didn't think that I was in the right mental space at that time to be standing the most important watch that me and my career as an engineer would have to stand um, at during this very important time. Because even though Summer Patrol is some real big kind of stuff that's going on that I can't talk about here, right? But um, yeah. I had to stand it. Um, and I, and I wouldn't say like, Hey, I don't think I'm fitted to stand this watch right now mentally. Like I just wouldn't say that, you know what I'm saying? So on the other side of the coin, um, my wife, I'm talking to my wife and I'm trying to figure out, you know, if I needed to be back there, you know what I'm saying? So we found out yeah. that, we found out that during the time that I was there, the doctors had given her some paperwork suggesting to extend my time in San Diego. Right. But I didn't, I guess I was so wrapped up in whatever was going on when I was in San Diego, I didn't remember about that paper. So I didn't, I never sent that back or communicated with the ship about the paper that said, Hey, he should probably stick around longer than just, the nine days that he has to stick around for. So now I'm back on the ship. I quarantined and I already did all of this stuff without even understanding that I should have been home. So at this point, I felt like I should have been home. She felt like I should have been home. And the doctor said I should have been home, but we never saw that. So at some point we did get that up to the command. But, you know, at that point, it's like you're here already. You know, yeah, they said you should have stayed but you're here and where we were at the time. I can't say that I was like getting me off the ship was the highest priority of things to do. And that's not, uh, that's yeah. not like a knock on the command. Um, but, and then it also wasn't a real reason to get me. Off. What my wife was dealing with is I wouldn't say normal, but it's a thing that women go through, you know? Um, and, uh, at the time, one of the more important people on the ship wife had just, uh, was going through the same thing. So they were able to relate to, you know, what was going on. Um, so they, and they knew and understood. So they knew it wasn't like he has to lead a ship, but as a husband, you know, you're, you're attached to whatever your wife is going through. Like none of the other stuff matters. All the logical stuff is like, yo, yeah. I, like I need to, you know, go. You know, but at the same time, again, I'm standing this very, like, the most important. So, you know, we on watch. I got three hours on. I think I had, it was like a three to six and then a 21, uh, the balls, which is um, 11.59 for civilians at night before 12 a.m. So three to six, so the 15 to 18, then you off for three hours, and then you back, you know, you back on from 21 to 23.59 or whatever, 23.45. So that was the watch I was standing. Um and everybody that was on my watch team got me through every single day. It was them. Um, them and them only. You know, it was uh, some, not them only, my division and some other stuff uh, too, uh, the, the mess, of course. But um, it was a lot of, you know, me, and I know I was getting on my wife's nerves because uh, I wanted answers that at the, at the time, you know, she couldn't provide was probably too weak to worry about and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, but, um, yeah, man, I, I, I don't think that we, you know, when we, I'm standing seeing anchor watches, uh, special evolution watches, all types of stuff. Uh, I think I was late. Like I'm never late, man. I, I think I didn't, I didn't even know I was on a CN anchor watch bill. I didn't expect to be on like a CN anchor watch bill. 
Um, but I was on the CN Anchor Watch Bill. I think the first two times I was late. Like, I didn't know I was on it. Like, they're like, yeah, where are you at? But um, I don't know if we consider um, that stuff when we, um, when we got sellers going through stuff. And I don't know if uh, we always need to give them the space to bring it up. That might be something that we could ask or we could think about and consider and ask them about if somebody would have asked me like hey you know do you feel like you know and people probably don't even know like maybe standing e out is not the choice right now but if i would have been asked like yo do you feel like you know you could stand this watch right now um i probably would have been like nah i don't want that much responsibility yeah i mean and that's just me being honest um like yeah. mentally, like if something happens on this watch, I don't know how I can handle it. And I don't want to say on the back end, if something did happen that, yeah, I didn't handle this right because I'm half of my mind is not here. But that was the truth. Like half of my mind was not there, you know, but I wasn't sophisticated, I guess, uh, psychologically sophisticated enough to bring that up myself, you know? So yeah. I mean, what's your but opinion? sometimes we got to figure that out too, though. So sometimes we have to, as leaders, we have to know that though, because we, we already know what you're going through, right? So those questions have to come up. I I would have, you'd have got that question from me, no doubt. We would we would have been talking about this a whole lot more, and I wouldn't been talking to you because we friends. I've been talking to you like because I know what you're going through. If I had a sailor come back to the division and he went through some some crazy stuff, I'm going to be asking those questions because I know what he's been through. Yeah. Right. So if those questions didn't come up, you know, I feel like I just feel like it should have came up to you. I feel like you should have been asked that not necessarily. Can you stand watch? But at least I can get a feel for what you're going through in your mentals by by just talking to you about stuff, you know, and uh, maybe you wouldn't have came out of, of your shell and talked about it, you know, this and that. But I still can feel and I still can can know. And then as a chain of command, though, you have to understand that too, though, man. Like, you come back on the watch. I would I would have thought, you know, on what you're going through, you would have had a little time off the watch bill anyway when you first got back just to get you back, you know, in the game. And then I think those questions should have been asked, man. I, I think you should have, um, hey, are you okay? At least, hey, are you okay to stand this watch? Are you good, you know, to do this? And I, I'm assuming... Uh, I know you, you would have been up front, right? You wouldn't have, you wouldn't have said yes, just to be saying yes. You know, um, I think you would have, you would have, uh, said, Hey, give me a little time or, or, you know, or something, or at least give me somebody real strong. You know, you would have said something. You just wouldn't have went with the, you know, went with the flow. You would have said something. Yeah. Yeah. I will. But you got to ask those questions though, man. It's, it's too much going on right now, but back to the piece you talked about. When you were talking about uh, your sailors, uh, one thing about it now, man, we have a, a lot of things in, in place that we are talking about mental health and, 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 and suicide stuff a lot more now in the Navy. I feel like that we we do talk about it a lot. We talk about it at quarters. We put information out. We put stuff in the POD. We talk about it a little bit more. So I wouldn't feel as bad saying I should have seen this before because I we do talk about this stuff a lot. Yeah. I feel like we do anyway. Yeah. And, 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 um, I think, uh, what, you know, the thing with the sellers and, um, you know, our sellers, you grow, you grow a connection with them. Um, I know I do. Um, it's, it's as much emotional for me as it is professional, as it is mental, as it is everything. Um, so, you know, I grow a connection with them all. I've, I've spoken to like almost every one of my sellers, uh, even ones that's been gone since I've been gone, since I'm not at the command, you know, them and people yeah. from commands prior. Um, and some of them reached out to me. Uh, so that's, you know, for me, that's always a, you know, a big, a big thing. But, um, but the chain of, out, outside of that watch bill, um, and just, you know, it was just weird for me. Uh, that was the only thing like just being on and uh, it was another thing that I, uh, I didn't do and um, I should have done it. I felt like I should have done it. I talked to a couple people, people that I, you know, kind of respect what they say uh, is I've always been super transparent with the CEO. 
um, and just able with, and now, and when I say with the CEO, I'm not just talking about the current CEO that was, uh, in seat, yeah. um, CEO before him as well. Um, and, and it was, they were inviting for me to be like that. And I've always been very transparent with them. Um, and it was always a good relationship that I felt like they, you know, uh, fostered. Um, but, uh, I never talked to the CEO. Like I never had a, um, like went up to him and again, you know, these are things that we deal with, man. And I don't want nobody to think that they can't talk to their chief, that devil or something like that. Um, but, um, I'm dealing with, you know, like, yo, I should go talk to the captain. And I didn't want to talk to the captain and like get off the ship. I wanted to talk to the captain because I didn't know if the captain knew exactly, um, everything that was going on, like all of the new details about, I thought he might have only knew about the miscarriage and the DNC. After a miscarriage, it's a DNC, and then about like three days, and then at length, uh, like three weeks or something, everything is over. You know what I'm saying? But this wasn't that. Like this is something that we still had, you know, to go through. And I always felt yeah. bad, like, man, I didn't yeah. sit down with my captain. It, it wound up being we pulled into like some port, and I ran into the CEO. He, you know, he stopped me like, hey, you know, how's everything? I'm like, man, you know, I owed you. And I still do owe you a, a sit down just to kind of talk to you and tell you, you know, everything, how's everything, you know, going and stuff like that. But um, we we never I think we wound up talking on, on the day I checked out, stuff like that. But we never checked out. Um, we never had that conversation. But one of the things I want to say is that um, while all of this was happening in the chain of command and I told him, you know, but I want to say it here um, and it's pretty personal because I'm talking about a chain of command and stuff like that. It's not like a global naval thing, but the chain of command was very classy with how they handled everything. Um, they handled everything uh, classy um, with as with anything. There are things that you agree with and there are things that you disagree with. Right. So what we just said is. uh I disagree with the awareness of the mental state of, you know, the seller and like just kind of knowing if the seller can handle this responsibility at this moment in time. I disagree with yeah. the way that was approached. I can't say that I don't, you know what I'm saying? But um, that's one thing. Um, everything else that the chain of command did with me being extended uh, and stuff like that, it was classy. Um, and it, it just wasn't. It just didn't feel nasty. It didn't feel clunky. It didn't feel like people didn't uh, know or understand what I was going through. It felt like I was a seller in the Navy and I still had a job to do. You know what I'm saying? But it also felt like, hey, we know, you know, we know you're going through something. My department head knew, yeah. like, he, I could tell he knew I was on extended time. <laughs> um, and I could tell that's how, you know, uh, I was handled. Um, my, um, division officer, I could tell she, she was very graceful about the whole thing. I could tell she knew that, you know, I was on extended time, stuff like that. My CMC who was brand new, just checked in. He always had time. Um, and I was astonished by that, man. Um, above like so many other qualities that he had, he always had time, man. And I don't know if you know what that looks like, man, but he always had, like, if you go talk to him it always seemed like he had an infinite, he wasn't like, it didn't seem like he had to go talk to the XO, had to go talk to the CO, had to go do this. It didn't seem like he, he had, like he was waiting for you. Like, like, Oh yeah, here. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And this was almost anybody of any rank ever. Like, you know, it was a connection, man. And, um, as a, as if I that's good. You know, go on. Yeah. If I go on to be a CMC, that's how I want to be. I want to be that person that always have, Tom. Um, another person I want to give a shout out to, uh, special is a uh, Lieutenant, uh, Damon Brown, um, who you might remember as ATO, but, uh, he wound up, uh, filling in for the Webs job. So he was extended, uh, with me. Like he's, ex he was extended too. Like he might still be on the ship right now. Um, but me and him, you know, we talked about eight months ago about leaving at the same time. And then we still were thinking we were leaving at the same time with extensions. But I think he still might be extended. But the one thing I want to say about him was he would ask me, um, how are you doing? Um, and a lot of people ask you how you doing. A lot of people do that. But when he asked it, 
when he asked me that question, it felt like he really wanted to know and really cared about how I was doing, um, which is unique. Yeah. It's hard for me to explain what that means, but he like, he definitely like, like whenever he asked me, I'm like, man, like I should lay down on the couch or something and really like give it to him. Like, like, but it's just him, his demeanor. Uh, he's another guy that's always like, um, real high energy stuff like that so uh he, you know yeah, even yeah. like when we the gym opened back up he's like hey man you back in and i was back in like yo i'm back in now i'm back in like right now real time this conversation i'm back in man i've been in i've been seeing you on there on the watch and stuff like that but i i'm yeah, in there i know you've been seeing you been seeing, yeah, you, you back in yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> but, uh, yeah, been been me that, but um yeah so he you know but he would ask me um you know how you doing and and i felt that um uh the the uh D Barty, she was a TAD on a ship. Um she was my Epsi um when I was E out. She man, um she helped get me through. Uh I'm so glad that uh I was on watch with a TAD uh chief um at that time. Um she she helped get me through. I can't really explain what that means, but um yeah, I'm so glad about that. And then um Underwood, man, uh, the EN1. Uh, so in the whole, in the time while I'm back, uh, what well, in the time while I'm back, uh, the EN1, one of the things he's doing is trying to uh, do a, a a swap with a sailor from another ship, right? But another thing that he's doing at this time is this like sprint to like get quals and stuff done. You know what I'm saying? So when I get back, I got EN1. You know. Um, we worked our way into being some of those guys that people come to for training. Right. So I got an EM one and some other, you know, a couple of officers and stuff like that coming up like, uh, like, Hey, you know, chief, let me get some training, EL training, boom, EDO training. So dog, when I'm back, EM one want training and I'm not really in the mental space to like really want to like, you know, sit down with it and stuff like that. But he was patient with me and we got some stuff done. He got some quals. Um, he got his EDO, my last uh, duty day as an EDO, he stood it. He was like the EDO uh, shadow standby. And, um, man, uh, he really helped me out that day. Like, he pretty much did everything. We had a lot of issues. He pretty much did everything. But uh, just a real stand-up guy. And when you give him that responsibility, he one of those guys that uh, take it serious. Like, he not the kind of guy that if you like, yo, you the EDO, he going to, you know, shit on that job like he 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 takes it serious uh the yeah. day after uh our day leaving watch though we had a little issue like the guys act like they didn't want to show up to um turnover man i had to do a mass counseling man i never done that like i wrote everybody up man i i never done that you know? and these guys are these guys that i you know got a lot of respect for and a lot of love for man i had to write all their asses up every one of them man Damn near the yeah. whole. They know what time it is yeah, though. Damn near the whole. They know what time yeah, it is yeah, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and these my guys, man. You know what I'm saying? But um, but and they knew. They knew what was up. Ian one knew what was up. He's like, hey, he did. He he had a stand up move. He's like, yo, the first person that signed that counseling shit. He's like, the first counseling shit that was signed was me, because he he wasn't there either. He's like, it was me. He's like, this is on us. You know what I'm saying? So he he kind of talked, yeah. you know. But he one of those guys, and um, that's one of them things I I, I, I respect about him a lot um during that time i was focused on my turnover uh um you know giving it to another another chief or whatever uh giving a uh the shop and stuff like that to another chief so that was you know one of the things so uh in the midst of you know en1 uh you know wanting training working on stuff like that quals uh me my wife things like that, uh, getting through some of those personal battles and then preparing to leave my division um, and, you know, turn it over to another chief. This division that we kind of got it out the mud together, like it was uh, just coming from, you know, uh, pre-com and it was a lot of stuff like that that we were going through. Um, you know, it's time to turn this over. Something that you care about, you helped yeah. build uh for x amount of time it's time to give it to somebody else to take it to the next level um and that's all you ever hope for is that the next person take it to the next level so i do want to shout out you know you know my relief um i'm a 
try not to say too everybody's name uh, in this because I don't want it to feel that personal. But um, the one thing that a couple things kept me going, um, and I'll do my uh, since you're not going to talk about a book, I talk about a book, the autobiography of Malcolm X um, by Alex uh, as uh, told by Alex Haley, um, narrated by Lawrence Fishburne. Um, that kept yeah. me going. Uh, first, oh, uh, first man. <laughs> so first, Larry Fishburne, <laughs> you know he. He just had me laughing, just his narration. Like, you would think he was going for the Oscar. Um, but, uh, it, you know, talk about the conk and the zoot suit and the beginning phases of uh, the journey of uh, Malcolm X, uh, Detroit Red or whatever like that. And then, man, the last, everything was clarified, man. I, I was having a lot of issues when just communicating with my wife and just uh, – me having needs and desires that she couldn't really like fucking uh really feel at that time and that's just selfish anyway because the moment is about her um and some things that she gone through that you know i need to be worried about why am i worried about myself right now um but uh the malcolm x book claire like really gave me a lot of clarity and really helped me out and I was happy to have read it, and it made my mood a lot better. The final chapters, the last couple chapters, made my yeah. mood a lot better. And then another thing that helped me out was just the Navy. I look at the Navy like a sitcom. Um, like you ever watch uh, Friends or Everybody Loves Raymond, and you got the character, or the Simpsons or whatever. Like you got the character that before the thing happens to, you already know, like, you already start laughing like, man, yo, Homer, he about to like try to play basketball. Like you already laughing like, man, you <laughs> know, it's going to be funny. Uh, right, yo, Martin about to fight such and such. You already know it's going to be funny. And that's how I look at the Navy. Like it, you got these characters, man. And uh, like, you're like, man, Osborne, <laughs> like, like Osborne about to do this, uh, uh, you know, uh, Ian one about to have to go through this. Or, so, and that kept me going, man, just, everybody in pocket and you know who they supposed to be um a lot of sellers that i didn't even know listen to the pod like hit me up like yo chief man when the next one i'm listening uh you know uh people you know find out about hey i'm sorry to hear about your wife chief um yo i love your podcast you know stuff like that so all of that stuff uh kept me going and then i'm gonna i'm gonna get off of my um uh, kind of like my soapbox and there's a couple of things I want to talk to you about outside of my soapbox. Um, in a second, I'm going to get off my soapbox after I express, um, this, um, uh, when I left the command. Um, so after all of that happens, right. From the pregnancy to the miscarriage, to the, uh, quarantine, to the pregnant, the PDS pregnancy, miscarriage, quarantine, um, coming back to the ship, um, all of these things, um, first, uh, so one of the biggest things I wanted to do was come back to the ship and leave the way I was supposed to leave. Um, cause uh, it was a question yeah. on if I, if I just stay from the emergency leave and just don't come back. I never, between me and my wife, I didn't want that to happen. And that was a conversation I had with the captain too. Like, yeah, I didn't want that to happen. I wanted to leave the way that I was supposed to leave the ship. Um, and that's, by saying goodbye to people, you know, I had sellers like, yo, chief, you, you know, if you want to say bye to me, chief, like, you know, so I'm like, um, I got to go back, you know, so that was one of the things I knew I would have had to execute. What I didn't know is how overcome what emotion I would have in doing that. Um, I literally, uh, shed tears. Um, so the night before, mm. yeah, the night before, I didn't know what like the next what was going to transpire the next day but I I knew it because I was kind of like getting overcome with emotion just talking to like one of my newest guys like one of my brand new guys like hey grinder man like and I'm like dang I'm, like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna miss you keep it up boom, boom, boom you good guy and all this stuff I'm like dang I'm only he was cranking at the time he wasn't in the division I'm like I'm only talking to grinder right now like you know and that's not the downplay <laughs> grinder who he is but he's brand new like I'm like man this is gonna be crazy um so I knew I gotta talk to everybody one-on-one -on -one. I gotta talk to someone I, I, I can't lie I actually avoided some sellers like it was some sellers I didn't want to see 
um, before I left. You know, your Wilsons, your Underwoods, like the ones who got like the story kind of like histories on a Peralta that I was a part of something with them. I'm like, man, I can't see you. Like I'm doing way too much. Um, so one of the one of the ones that, you know, I would have avoided, but I didn't was my old Devo, who he was his first uh, tour on board, uh, you know, uh, Davis. Uh, right. Um, I'm trying mm-hmm. to say everybody's name, but uh, him. Yeah. Charles Davis. Uh, JG um, now. But uh, we got to, and I didn't know this was going to happen. He was one of the last people I talked to. And I'm like, I just sat down and I just started bawling, man. And um. And I do that when I'm not that emotional as a, as a person on like normal stuff, like somebody dies or whatever. I don't really get emotional, but some yeah. reason when it comes to like leaving places and like when I'm thinking about everything we accomplished, everything we did and uh, stuff like that, I get overcome with emotion. So it's not even like sad. It's not even happy. It's just, I don't know what to do with these emotions. So, so, so they become these tears yeah. and they just fall. So, you know, so I'm trying to have talks with, uh, with him, uh, and it was hard, you know, so he, you know, he did the heavy lifting and then I came and I was trying my best to speak because that's one of the things I like doing. Um, and I had a hard time with him. I had a hard time with my, uh, my EM one who was trying, who was having issues with, uh, some, uh, trying to, you know, deal with getting off the ship as well. Um, but, um, but I got through it, uh, and uh, I can't say I got through it in one piece. It was super emotional. Uh, but I do want to say, um, you know, to every sailor on the ship, the ones that I, I didn't get to talk to and stuff like that, just to, you know, just to keep building that legacy, keep uh, creating that story. I know they talk a lot about being the best and, and, and running the numbers up, and um those are things that I agree with as well. But the other thing I agree with is, uh, the family, um, aspect as far as just being a close knit team and, uh, the camaraderie between the junior sellers up and through the chief's mess up and through, uh, officer country. And I know that COVID did a lot to like separate people. Um, but I want physically separate people, but I want people to be strong as hell uh, mentally and as a as a team and, and and as a unit so if it's one thing that i want to just kind of communicate with those sellers is just to stay close-knit uh keep in communication with the people that are supposed to be your leaders and don't let uh stereotypes don't let past pain don't let that stuff uh guide your future and the people that you uh, seek out yeah. for leadership and stuff like that. So that's the biggest, uh, you know, that's the biggest thing I want to um, say. I'm weeks now removed from the ship, so it's not as emotional as it was for me when I was leaving. But, man, I had a great time there, man. We, we you know, we built a lot as far as programs and um, we fixed a lot of stuff. Uh, we broke a lot of stuff. We had it. We had a great time. Uh, we had a really good run. You you had a great run on there. Um, and, uh, yeah. you know, I did, too. Um, you know, then I left and then there was issues with the flight. You know, the Navy got back to doing what the Navy does. It was issues with the flight. Now, one thing I want to bring up outside of me is, you know, one thing I noticed was, well, well let me ask you this. Are you still competitive? Super, super okay. competitive. Right. Do you still want to be the best at what you do? Every day. Okay. All right. Do you still compete with people? Yes. It, it don't matter. I mean, I'm competing. I'm competing almost every day, man. Like, I, if I see somebody, if I'm working with somebody, and I see them doing more than what I'm doing, I'm competing now. It's just my nature, though, man. That's, and I've always been like that. If I see somebody, like, I, they shine, they work. It ain't me. I, I won't hate on they shine or they work. Right, But right, I'm here right. to outwork you. Yeah, yeah, you see it. You know, you see it. You ch- you either champion it or you challenge it. Um, if, if I'm not yeah. the best, if I'm not the best, I'm looking at the person that's the best, and I'm giving that person their flowers. Uh, like, yo, this person is, yeah, yeah. Know, I'm trying to get on that level. Um, I, yeah. I, I ask you that stuff because I I, I realized that um, 
that well before we completely detach let me uh finish off by saying hey i'm not gonna say the name of this ship um but uh i love you guys i'm gonna miss you guys and just keep steaming keep kicking ass out there um um on the sea and uh keep building keep building leaders uh, I thank you for the experience and um, I'm going to take uh, everything I learned from you and I'm going to take it somewhere else. And for the namesake of the ship, uh, true hero and thank you. Um, so that's that for that. All right. So back here, I say that because I realize like not everybody can peace. Um, uh, you know, I had a conversation uh, close to when I was leaving a ship that taught me like not everybody can peace. And I, and it made me feel like that some people don't even think it's cool to compete, you know? And for me, I'm a competitor. I compete. I'm seeing who the best. I want to be the best. Um, and that's not, yeah. I'm, I'm close to my mid thirties. Um, so, uh, I'm still somebody that, you know, watched Michael Jordan, watched Kobe Bryant, have seen Michael Phelps, seen top competitors. And that's the kind of person that I am. That didn't change because I chose to be in the military. Um, I want to be the best chief that I could be. Um, you know, I wanted to be the best electrician that I could be when that was all I had to be. Um, yeah, that's that never stopped for me. Um, I just want to say that uh, because. I don't want that to be misconstrued as that's something that I like that, that guides me or whatever like that. But that's in my blood. Like to be a competitor is something that's in my blood. Like I've never went anywhere and did it like wasn't seeking out to be the best at whatever I was doing. You know what I'm saying? So I want to be the best husband and stuff like that. But I, I, I learned that like either people bullshitting uh, not everybody want to be that man. <laughs> yeah, what you think? Hey, hey, it's, it's one of those things, man. Like me, like I compete, man. Like, and, and my, my, I'm like you though. My mindset is, if I am doing it, I'm trying to do it on a high level. Yeah, right. I'm never gonna show up and just do it just to be doing it. Right. right. I want to wow people because they know I'm prepared to wow them. They know I'm. I'm here for a reason. I'm not just, I've never been like that, man. If we out there racing and you beat me, you go, you might beat me, but it ain't gonna, you ain't gonna beat me because I wasn't trying to be prepared or I wasn't trying to beat you because I'm trying to beat and you. And we probably, we you know, probably so. racing again. <laughs> like we probably gonna get it till I, yeah. till I win, man. You know what I'm saying? When I was on yeah. my, um, when I was on my uh, physical fitness journey, my goal was to beat the fastest uh, runner, like the, the fastest PFA runner. That was my goal. So when, yeah. you know, when I got out there and ran with him, when I felt like I would beat him, I'm like, yo, I'm going to stay behind him for the majority of the, of the, of the, P, uh, the PFA, the PRT. And then at the end, I'm going to just zoom past him because he's probably tired. Man, I'm staying behind him for the majority of the PRT. And he was slower than I thought. You know, at this point, by this time, I'm like, yo, why this dude so slow? <laughs> like, 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 I'm like, I could have been back. Like, so then I like, Past him, I'm like, yeah. And then we talk at the end. He's like, dang, dude, you know. And I was like, before then, I was like, big, big. You know what I'm saying? So he's like, dang, you, you know. He's like, you beat me. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yo, honestly, dude, you was a lot slower, like, than I thought you was gonna be. Like, I could have been this. Yeah. I probably could have been done this. Uh, and that's not me being cocky or not. But that's I'm a competitor. That's what I want to do. I want to compete. Um, yeah. If you're not a competitor and you look at that like weird and you think like that that gets in the way of uh, humility or whatever like that, I, I got to say I disagree. Um, I'm still really humble. Um, I still uh, appreciate all my sellers. I appreciate everything and uh, stuff like that, but I just want to compete. And I think that's the shit yeah. that like brings tears to my eyes when I leave a place because I know how many times I put it all out on the floor, you know? And you know how many times that people knew you did it, uh, people. Uh, yeah. And then at times they didn't know, like, that's what you did was you put it all. I put it all on, on yeah. the floor like a thousand times. And, <laughs> and let, let me tell you, man, like, like, like people wonder why we get emotional when we are not what we think we should be. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. That's the reason. 
that's the reason why I get emotional about about where I am. When I say emotional, it ain't about tears and about that, but I'm talking about it. Like if I feel that I should be a certain place because I put that work in, I'm going to talk about it. It ain't I'm not talking about it because I'm hating on this person. I'm talking about it because I know the work that I put in to get where I'm at because I <laughs> because I see him or her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know this is not, yeah. I know that I, I yes, I know what I what I, I'm doing. I'm, I'm watching them too. I'm watching you. Yeah. If you if you hit the same thing, if you where I'm at or whatever I'm trying to get to, I am paying attention to what you're doing, you know. And then if that person outshine me or that person, I'm like you. I'm giving the flowers to him. Like yeah, they they yeah, got they, me. Yeah. You know what I mean? That that was good. Good. What I need to do. You know? Because you know? this is intentional. Yeah. Man. This is this ain't like um. Like, well, I hate when people say, like, yeah, this person is a natural talent or a natural leader and stuff like that. You know, a lot of people, like, you know, even, like, for, like, you know, your Kobe Bryans are, like, you know, people like Kobe, he practiced a lot. Like, he worked on his craft a lot. Um, and that's something I, you know, want to say about myself. Like, this is, like, for what I do and for what I've done, um, it's been intentional. Like, I'm trying to be good at what i do don't tell me that it's natural and it's a gift and all yeah. that because it takes away from the amount of time the amount of effort the amount of consciousness that i put into what i do um and you know it was just weird like noticing and realizing that it's not a lot of people that does that that's willing to compete that's inspired by like people that you know that that do that too um and that was that was different for me uh learning that i'm like dang like it ain't you know um and i'm glad i like to kind of stay around like-minded individuals that you know that do compete yeah and i, I and i wonder if that energy rubs off on the junior sellers um because yeah. I, I see a lot of juniors and, and it, what's up i'm listening yeah and, and, and one thing about it is man and, and really what gets me is when I talk about my competitiveness or whatever the case may be. I can hear another person maybe in the background saying, well, I don't care about that. Yeah. I don't care about being number one. I don't care about being that. So it's like, you know what you need to be successful at something, but you don't want to be competitive to go get it. That's how I look at it. Like, you know, say if I, if this is an example, the example is, if I win this race, I'm going to get a million dollars, right? Yeah. But if you don't put that work in and you don't care about this and that, how are you going to be competitive to win that race? Right. You have to care about something and you got to be competitive enough to put it in and you got to be competitive to even want to win that million dollars. Yeah. But I hear so many people level. like, I don't care at the highest level. I don't care about this. I don't care about that. And sometimes, man, I think that's the reason why you not sometimes where you want to be is because yeah. you don't care about it enough. And it's like, my, you know, my thing is this. It's a, your career choice, your career, whatever you do, your field or whatever. That's what you do. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you didn't become a basketball player. You didn't become a musician. You didn't. You're in the Navy. Um, if you was a basketball player, would you be wanting to be? The lowest man on the on the totem pole, the closest man in injury reserve, or would you yeah. be wanting to be in an all star game? Yeah, you know, if you were a singer, yeah, you know, if you were a musician, would you, you know, who do you want to be? Um, but you're in the military. Um, you should be striving to be. I mean, this this is what I told myself and what I tell myself. I'm in the military. I should be striving to be the best that I could be here. I should be striving to be that that person you know that number one person uh whatever like that that's what my goal is and that's what my goal would be if i wasn't in the military anywhere that i am um that's just my makeup you know what i'm saying so yeah i definitely wanted to kind of ask you about that another thing i wanted yeah. to hey and for and for all for everybody out there like like not feeling what we're saying about being competitive hit us up I mean, I want to know you know the side that side of you. What makes you who you are? If you are not competitive, and just to see, because sometimes people are competitive and don't even know they're competitive. Yeah. You know, they look at it a different way. So, I want to see that side. So, you guys hit us up and 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 let's talk about it. You know, I want to see. Yeah. Um, another question I want to ask you. 
Uh, it's a two part, but I'm gonna ask you one part first, and I want to see what you say. Then I'm gonna add the second part. Is is making rank easier now uh, for some rates? Do you think? Yeah, most definitely. Um, but I don't think it's a. I really don't think it's a. Um, it's a. They make it rank. They make the the navy is making it easier. I think it's a retention thing now, man. Like I really think rates are now sailors are getting out of the navy um, a lot faster now than it used to be. Like when I came in, that's all I knew was the navy. The opportunities for sailors are now is is, is so much better in certain rates outside the navy that they're getting out. And also, with that being said. Sailors going out to sea mm -hmm. is not the same no more. These sailors are really um, putting that work in out there. Uh, when I say the schedule, a ship's schedule right now is out of control. It's unpredictable. Um, and I think a lot of sailors are getting out the Navy because of um, when they do that sea duty, because of the schedule. Um, they don't get to do the things that they want to do uh, while they out to sea and they don't understand when well, people who've been in for a while and been on a couple ships we kind of understand how it works and 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 how to maneuver uh, through sea duty but if you come in fresh out of boot camp or fresh out of a school you may not understand that this is how it works or this is how it goes and 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 then with the unpredictable of the schedule and we have to go do this you got you got ships out there doing two deployments in one year mm -hmm. right so um i think it's hard it's hard for some sailors to deal with and i think they're getting out so with that being said if you can't keep these sailors in the navy that means some of the rates uh percentages is going to go up and it's going to be easier for them to make to make rank so i think that plays a part in it too but it always been like that though man think i mean certain rates always made rank a little bit faster uh, than other rates so that's when that choose your rate choose your fate thing comes yeah, from. yeah but yeah um now, but yeah it is what it is now man. with that said though right do you think that the 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 outlook on advancement is tainted like so i'll give you an example of what i mean i, I got a guy um love him to death he you know one of my um one of my favorite people um but he made rank quick you know all his ranks um he's out for chief now and i could just tell like he'll probably hurt if he doesn't make it right i don't he don't even got like eight years in yet you know but i could tell if he don't make chief like he might feel like man i, I really um i'm a failure you know what i'm saying um and it's like you know you see people make i made chief kind of fast in comparison to some people else or some other people at that time um but you see you know you see this stuff and you feel like and I, I remember our like last time you know results came out it was people you know who didn't make chief their first time it was just like the world their world hurt. Did, like hurt yeah um but do you think like that people make rank like the people like me like some of the outliers have like made it consciously like harder for some of the junior sellers now like and they feel more like a failure because they you know that it might take a little bit more time for them to make rank now i ain't talk about your 17 year first class that been trying to put on chief for the last five six years but that seven year first class that's up for chief that ain't you know yeah. make it on the test and just felt like they was a fucking failure do you feel like like what do you want um, um, what's your thought on that like, well i I actually got a big take on that, man. When I and it, it's, I ain't gonna say it's a hardcore take or anything like that, man. But in our mind and how we think, we know if we put the work in or not. Um, do I feel like a seven-year uh, chief can put the work in? Yes, yeah, yeah. I do. But I do know if I was up for chief at seven years, um, and I did X, Y, Z. I feel like I got a good chance of making this. Mm -hmm. It's sailors out there with seven years that haven't done X, Y, and Z and up for chief and then get upset when they don't make it. Mm -hmm. Right? So you can have, for example, a uh, MM1, right? Been in seven years um, and don't make chief, but they don't have EI letter. Never had one. So I feel like 
it's a possibility in your mind you should know you may not make this because of that. Mm -hmm. Right? I may not make it, but they don't really understand that. They feel like they should have made it. Um, but if you don't put yourself at that level, and that comes back to me being competitive, um, I know if I need it, if I'm an MM1, like I was a DC1, mm -hmm. and I felt like, hey, I got my EI letter, and I knew I had a good chance of making it. And I ain't make cheap to 13 years in, but I knew at that time I had one of the better chances of making chief because of that EI letter. So if I didn't make it, I may have felt bad about it because I know I had every check in the box yeah. um, to make it. But when you don't have all the checks in the box, I still feel like sailors don't understand that it's a possibility that I may not make it. They feel like I should make, I should have made it because they up for it. Yeah. Put the work in. Put the leader. Put lead sailors, and you will make it. But you have it's both ways though. Sailors put you put these anchors on you, right? So you do do uh, good by them. But then also check your performance out. Yeah. Check what you doing at doing. Like a lot of sailors, that goes back to EP. Sailors think they deserve an EP when they haven't put that work in. Yeah. I you mean, have I, to put the work in. Yeah, and I guess if I could add to that, I just say just understand uh, other aspects of promotion too even if we not talk about making chief like if we talk about making first and making second um understand that it's yeah. other things that matter like you brought it up earlier um retention the community um other things matter your year group other things matter like don't feel like a complete failure if you cut an 88 percentile and you ain't make it uh don't feel like a complete failure just know that it's other things that's incorporated in that um and I know y'all hate to hear this, but um, keep pushing to that next exam. Um, um, when it's time to get it, you know, it's going to be your time. I know y'all hate to hear that. Um, somebody told me that. Yeah, geez, yeah. I hate to hear that. Shit. But, I mean, that's, you know, that's just what it is. Some of, some of the times we can't help it, but you're not a failure because you didn't make it as fast as, you know, this person. I think we push that so much, like, like making it fast like yeah. it means this or that, like this dude makes yeah. so chief in this amount of time, this dude makes chief in this amount of time that we kind of taken away from like some people, some people it might take longer than, but that don't mean they, they going to be a worse leader. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. that's one of the things, a couple more things before we go. Um, I don't, I don't want us to be here way too long, but were, were you familiar with that ass that ask, the chief uh facebook page it was a facebook page um called ask the chief it probably still is but i got off of it are you familiar with that i am familiar with it someone invited me to it but i haven't uh -huh. been on it at all i it pops up every now and then some little thing pops up man but it's a little to me personally man like some of the conversations on there was a little much for me so I don't. I wasn't as, <laughs> as active on it as um, I probably should be. I mean, I'm just asking cheap. I'm into that stuff, man. I love when people ask me and talk to me about stuff and and want some mentorship and all that. So I'm with all that. But some of those questions to me and and some of the stuff, man. Like I'm not into all that stuff, man. So I ain't gonna lie. I I kind of like <laughs> if you wanna you wanna talk to me, I'll let me, man. You know. Yeah. <laughs> but that yeah, stuff was too much. It was too. It was too to much stuff going on. <laughs> Yeah, hit up the pod, uh, what is it, PTSF podcast at gmail.com. We got an email and everything. So um, what I want to say about the Ask the Chief uh, thing, um, I got invited by a seller that I really respect. Um, and I, I, first of all, when you get invited to stuff and you got to do like the introductions and stuff like that, I don't really like that, like that part of the stuff. Like, yeah, I mean, I am this person or whatever. That's just me, my own personal thing. But I got invited. Um and I thought it was going to be something different than what it turned out to be. You know, I thought it was going to be like you said, I thought it was going to be more mentorship, uh, open source for mentorship kind of questions. And then like it started being questions like and this is a loose, uh, a loose um, interpretation, but started just being questions like, yo, like, why do chiefs, you know, why can't chiefs be trusted? Like, it's like, yo, like, who y'all expect that? Yeah, like, yeah. Like, like, yo, why? Hey, why they suck? going in like, on Chiefs so there, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then they, in the, in, the, in the comments, they like, ain't this ask the Chief? Like, y'all you, like, should be able to just answer this without uh, getting in your feelings. See, that's the issue with Chiefs and all. It's like, yo, like, these questions ain't it. Like, like these questions ain't it. Like, like if you want to talk to me, you go ahead. So when I saw that, I had, like, it was only one thing I responded to and that has something to do with 
making chief oh trust in, in the mess like uh and it was kind of about that like blind trust and all that if you see a chief doing something wrong boom, boom, boom. and like what i remember we we talked about like on our last episode and you was talking about the one dude you was like he's not a chief or whatever like that um only, only reason i remember that is because i just listened to the last episode like three days ago but you was you know we yeah. talk about the dude the freak the freak dude uh chief chief freak nasty or whatever and um he's like yeah, yeah, yeah. if he's doing that he's not a chief and um that was pretty much the sentiment that i was telling uh the woman seller that was talking to me is like it's like we it's not like that like if somebody doing wrong you either pulling them up you tell them they doing wrong are you I mean, it's gonna be acknowledged like it's not like just because you're in a mess you know we could be kind of cool that's the only thing i've ever um responded you know what you know it was about loyalty matter of fact like are you loyal she her question was are you loyalty to the navy or loyalty to the mess are loyal to the mess. And I'm like, well, if you're loyal to the Navy, then everything else, you know, comes after, you know, it's, there shouldn't be nothing going on in the mess. That's not loyal to the Navy. Like the mess is an entity of the yeah. Navy or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so that was that. But then after that, I just started seeing, get seeing it get really like an open kind of forum for like people to shit on like people. And I wasn't trying to be a part of that. So yeah, I, I got exactly. Off. That's what I saw too. Yeah. Yeah. I got off of it. Yeah. But now to compound with that though, before you made chief, did you trust chiefs? Yes, and and and, and I did, I did because I, I I actually it was a good freaking a good mess, good CMC, good. I, I've been I always been around pretty good mess, a pretty good mess coming up, man. But the thing about it is, man, um, it's what the mess was doing. Right, I don't know what they was doing inside the mess. I don't, I, but I didn't care. Yeah, that's the thing. I didn't care what the chiefs did. I was worried about how can I be the best sailor. Yeah. How can I get to the next level? How can my my chiefs head up training? That's what I cared about, man. My chief had a plan for us. Had yeah. a training plan. Had a had all this. I didn't care what they did inside the mess. You know what I mean? I just didn't care about that stuff coming up. It could have been bad. It could have been good. I just didn't care about that stuff, man. I just wasn't into none of that stuff. When I needed help, Chiefs was there. When I needed mentorship about anything that 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 happened that, that they had something to relate with, they was there to help me. So I think now uh, it's different, and people everything is different though. It's a different time, but that meant during my time, I wasn't worried about what the mess did. And how they did it and all that type of stuff. Now, if something got blown out of proportion or whatever, and, and then it got out to the ship and the whole ship knew about it, Chief was in there and he they talked about it. Because they did, uh, at the end of the day, they didn't want a bad light being on the mess because they wanted the mess, wanted people to come to the mess and talk to them. They didn't want me to be like, oh, man, I don't trust the mess, so I ain't going to never talk to them guys. I ain't blah, blah, blah. They didn't want that. So if something, if a Chief did something he ain't supposed to be doing, it kind of triggered down and we had to talk about it because they wanted to be trusted. The mess wanted to be trusted. Yeah. So uh, I always had that, man. But I, at the same time, like I said, man, my biggest thing was I never um, worried about what they was doing inside the mess. Yeah. As in to, I seem like today it's a lot, uh, a lot of sailors will be worried about, okay, the chief's doing this, chief's doing that. But I never, personally, I never cared about that stuff. Yeah. I had, um. so that's my, that's my take. I had some issues with, you know, with the mess, um, as a, as a, before, you know, before I became a chief, um, a few of them, you know, from the first mess that I was at, you know, it was a couple chiefs that, you know, um, for the most part, I, you know, I respected the mess, the chiefs that I had, I respected, them. but you know, I can't, you know, I came up around the time. A lot of chiefs was still, um, having sex with like, you know, junior sellers, you know what I'm saying? Some of that stuff you kind of knew about, you know, you saw that. I'm like, dang, like, what's going on? Like, this happening, senior chiefs hitting up this, you know. Um, so that was one of the, you know, things. But I think a bigger thing for me was, and I didn't understand. I was a junior seller, so I didn't understand it at the time. But I didn't see chiefs putting in work, like, the way I was. You know what I'm saying? But I was a junior seller, and I didn't understand that. Like, these dudes probably already, because I look at it like me now. Like, it ain't that much work somebody going to be putting in that I ain't already put in. 
So if I'm somewhere and it looked like I got like the chief hat on, it's somewhere that I've been before and I'll probably put that work in. You know, so but when I was somewhere like leading, like the second class, first class, and I'm like, boom, doing this, 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 more more so first class, and I'm like not seeing the Chiefs doing it, but they there. Um, I, like some of that, some of a Chief's job now is to just be there. You know what I'm saying? And that's not like a yeah. bad thing. Yeah. Some of the job is, especially at these M- MWR events and stuff like that, some of the chief job is to just show up, just go there, motivate, talk, be present, let the sellers know you're around. Um, and that's a lot of that deck play leadership. But when I was a junior seller, I'm like, yo, we out here doing it. I'm out here six in the morning. Like, where they be at? Where they at? You know, I remember saying like, yo, you know, they not going to help with NSERV. And one of my senior chiefs, he's like, yo, you can't, you can't say shit like that in front of, you know, in front of the division. I'm like, I'm like, what you, like, what you mean? Like, I just was being honest. Like, y'all not going to help us with NSERV. And he's like, you can't say that. Either. Like, he, he, he got at me, man. But, um, for the most part, I had a really good experience, um, with the mess. It wasn't like this whole, um, you can't trust them. The people I trusted the most were chiefs. Like um my I looked up to my chief. Like I the person that I'm talking yeah. about, I still look up to the person today in retirement. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, I wanted to be like this guy then. I still so and then everybody that ever learned anything from me, it's a part of it came from this person. Um so yeah, you know, that's one. you know, so that that was that for me. So it's always weird getting somewhere and seeing that big thing now oh, you, this is exactly what i would expect a chief to do or how i expect a chief to answer that like you're doing a chief thing this is the textbook chief like it's, it's like a like almost like you know a us against you kind of mentality and i like to separate myself from those situations because i don't think we flourish as a navy if people don't respect the mess and they are, are around it or whatever i, I think we flourish yeah. with the ones that do respect us and are around it um, last um, thing, you know, we kept this real personal. We talked about a lot of personal stuff. But one of the current events, yeah. right? Did you see the Michael B. Jordan movie, Without Remorse? Um, bits. I didn't finish it. I didn't finish it. That's one with Jay- Jamie. Right? Oh no, no, no! I did watch it. Yeah, I watched. I watched. It. Yeah, I watched. I it. it was real finished. good. I knew you. That's action. That's right up your alley, man. Oh yeah, yeah. That's right, my alley. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I watched it, man. It was good. Yeah, it was a good movie, man. Um, let me see. No, no, I, I, um, I don't want you to review it yet, right? But what I do want to do is, okay. w- w- wasn't he like a seal, right? Was he a seal at first? Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So have you seen in the news that uh, the seals, and only say this in connection to the Michael B. Jordan movie because that's the last uh, uh, cinematic representation, the last new major cinematic representation that I know about, about the seals. But um, did you see in the news where the seals are getting upset with like depictions of them on film and uh, ex seals cashing in on uh, either their tactics, uh, secrets, or uh, uh, kind of theory? Did you see that? Did you uh, see that uh, news story? Uh-uh. Yeah. So it was a news uh-uh. uh, story. I saw it on YouTube. Um, seals are actually getting upset with. Um, a lot of ex seals for talking about for profiting from killing uh bin laden um and uh and all of that like and um i just thought that was an interesting story um yeah you know but i mean because they got like this code of ethics that they say that they should be um following and that and, and in their eyes that that shit ain't cool you know what i'm saying but um what do you think? Do you think like that exposes some of their secrets or um, what? Well, yeah, I mean, it's like this: if they got some kind of, when you say like a code of ethics and all that stuff, if that's if that's something they signed up for, something they hit on the dotted line, yes. But if this old thing about um, you don't supposed to do this just because, yeah. And somebody out here want to give me $5 million. Yeah. You know, uh, we have to think about that for a minute. You know what I'm saying? But if it's something that we, like, when they retire or whatever, they in the military and they sign some paperwork, we, it's a secret. We don't talk about this one. I got that. I mean, I feel uh, that they are disloyal also. Yeah. But what but, if it was unwritten, though? What if it, what if it was unwritten? You, like, you. 
I don't know, man. That's that's kind of hard. It, it, it'll depend on what they want me to say and what they want me to do, what information they want, all that stuff. I wouldn't step out of me personally. I wouldn't step out of the line. Yeah. Though. I wouldn't step step um, out of line in a way that will um, make it sound bad for the seals or give away any information from the seals, anything like that. I, I wouldn't do that. Um, that's just me personally. But you know, money talk too, though. Money talk, bullshit walks. Man. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> hey, um, so uh, we won't do a movie review uh, this week. We won't do a book review this week. We're not getting away from. Uh, I talked about Malcolm X. We're not getting away from what we do. I know it's people that want to hear the movie review and want to hear the book review, but we wanted to um, be transparent. We wanted to. Uh, be a little personal. I mean, I know a lot of what y'all got was what I went through, but I just went, I just happened to go through a lot of shit. Um, yeah. But we do want to say that we are back and happy to be back. Um, and we back for the long run. Uh, we appreciate your listenership. Um, and I don't know, man. What else? Yeah, man. Uh, we back, man. Hey, get ready, though, man. We're going to have some good stuff for you guys, man. Like, I'm very, very excited though, man. Me and me and Dumbo have been talking about this for a while. And every time we have a conversation, it's, it ends with we ready to do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. So we both excited about you know getting back Super on here, ready. getting this stuff done, Super man. So, a lot of stuff yeah, happened. Most definitely. Um a lot probably have a little bit more guests, a lot more guests. A lot of stuff happened we need to talk about. We need to talk about the word faddish. We need to talk about um, leadership and demographics and the whole uh, extremist training thing. We ain't even get into it. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. So we definitely got a lot of stuff that we want to talk about. We just wanted to keep it real personal this episode. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. Uh, again, we appreciate you for riding uh, with us. And uh, me, me first, uh, I thank you for listening to another episode of PTSF Podcast and whatever you got, Dane. Yeah, most definitely, guys. Um, may any questions you guys got, anything you guys want us to touch on, also, uh, most definitely send it our way, um, and we'll talk about it, man. That's what we do. We love getting on here talking about stuff. So, uh, whatever it is, though, man, it it, it could be anything. Don't think it has to be uh, military related either, though, man. Just throw something up. You want to talk about my Niners, man? We'll talk about that too. You know, just just throw it on there and put it in there, man. So, um, yeah, man, be excited. Let's go. That was episode. 10 we in double digits now episode 10 of ptsf <laughs> podcast we thank you for listening i'm damo and i'm damon oh